see, I had a feeling that this was gonna happen. I almost had a certain feeling that this was actually gonna happen. What's going on guys? SMH, Super Mario Hoops, back with some more hoops. And today we're gonna talk about the Chicago Bulls, my team, the Chicago Bulls, are becoming a laughing stock in the NBA. And it's pretty bad, so let's get right into it. So if you look at laughing stocks over the past few years, you got teams like the Nets, you got the Sixers, and then you also got like the Knicks. But I mean, if you look at the Nets case, I mean, that's when Billy King was the general manager and it really all kind of like was a catastrophe once the trade happened for like Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett to the Nets and they were trying to contend, but they were just way too old. So that was kind of the big problem there. And I mean, with Sean Marks as their GM, they've kind of like rebounded pretty well off of that. And they made the playoffs last year and now they're actually, you know, they just signed Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, DeAndre Jordan, all in the same off season. And they look like a contender for the next many years. Not this year, of course, because Durant's injured, but for the next several years, they look like a contender. Moving on to the Sixers, if you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, they had Andre Iguodala as their main player in 2012, almost made the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, although injuries to the other teams, aka the Bulls, was kind of part of that. But you also look at that team that almost made the Eastern Conference Finals. Then they made a trade to try and get Andrew Bynum and trade away Iguodala for Andrew Bynum in that trade. He never even played for them, so that was kind of a big yikes. But it helped Drew Holiday develop, but apparently they didn't want Drew Holiday and they just wanted to restart everything. So they got uh, Nerlens Noel, and really, with Sam Hinkie's idea of the process, they kind of whiffed on a lot of these, you know, options. Nerlens Noel, he's not there anymore. Michael Carter Williams, uh, Alfred Payton, they drafted. He never even played there. Dario Saric. Jaleel Okafor too, uh, Markel Fultz, all those guys were big whiffs in, in terms of the uh, Philadelphia 76ers organization, but they struck gold on two players, which was Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. And I know they had injuries to start off their careers, but Embiid's first year he actually played, he only played about like 20 something games or like 30 games. Didn't really play that much, but you already saw like a drastic win change. Like they won like 17 more years the year that he was officially a rookie. And then once Ben Simmons got playing with Embiid healthy for a majority of the year, they actually were a 50 plus win team for the back to back seasons. And they most likely will be again this year. And then you look at the Knicks and I, sorry, Knicks fans, you're kind of still in this situation. I almost wanted to title it. Uh, this video why the Chicago Bulls are becoming the New York Knicks But I mean you look at where it all kind of started. I mean in 2012 2013 They were the second seed in the East, you know, they looked like a pretty good team with Carmelo Anthony uh, Even though Amari Stoudemire had injuries and Tyson Chandler uh, Was a defensive player of the year and an all-star J.R. Smith was sixth man of the year So you just like look at all that and they really had a pretty deep team but then it, w it all happened once, you know, uh, Phil Jackson came into the mix and everything kind of went downhill from there. You know, they missed the playoffs the next year, 2013, 2014. And then they decided to overpay Melo, which he could have came to the Bulls, which I mean, I kind of still wish happened, but uh, he didn't. So the Knicks wanted to pay him and he accepted the money. And the Knicks were just bad the next like two years. And then the one year where they got like Derrick Rose, Joaquin Noah, and I mean, Porzingis was in the second year at that time. Like people thought they were gonna make some noise in the East, but ultimately they had injuries. They were completely dysfunctional. Like they didn't hardly have a coach. Like a lot of their coaches over the years, like Derek Fisher, Kurt Rambis, those haven't been really great coaches, honestly. I know Jeff Hornacek had one really good year with the Suns in like 2014. But outside of that, he really hasn't done much as a head coach in the NBA. And I mean, after 2017, that's really when the Knicks, I feel like, started their rebuild. And because they were in a rebuild for about two years and even made bad draft picks like Frank Nielakina over Dennis Smith Jr., who they eventually traded, Kristaps Porzingis, their best player for Dennis Smith Jr., which really makes no sense. 
I mean, they missed out on this free agents. So obviously a team like the Knicks is in a similar situation as a team like the Bulls are right now, the Chicago Bulls. Now let me give you a quick summary of the Chicago Bulls. D. Rose, MVP in 2011. We were top of the Eastern Conference back-to-back -back years, 2011 and 2012, until an injury came. And then Rose missed the whole year, came back the next year, another injury came. Instead of the ACL, this time it was the meniscus. You guys know like the whole story though of Derrick Rose, so I'm not gonna like get, get into all that. But the point of it is, is that in 2015, was probably the last time the Bulls were relevant, was in 2015. And that was when we were playing the Cavs. We were up 2-1. Uh, arguably could have been up 3-1. I still feel like the refs kind of cheated us on that uh, David Blatt timeout, but regardless, that didn't happen. So we were in a pretty good spot. All the other teams that the Cavs played in the Eastern Conference that year, like they played the Celtics in the first round, swept them played the first seeded Hawks in the conference finals and swept them. The only challenge they had in the East was the Chicago Bulls. And the Bulls even had them on their heels when they were up 2-1 in the series over the Cavs. And then could have been up 3-1 in the series. It would have been like a completely different game. And who knows, the Bulls, even after like all the D. Rose injuries and Joaquin Noah injuries and, you know, like bringing in Pau Gasol to replace Carlos Boozer and trading away Luol Dang for literally nothing because Andrew Bynum never even played for us. Who knows? I mean, I know the Warriors kind of struggled in the finals that year. So if D Rose and Jimmy Butler were playing anything like they were in that Cavs series, then they very well could have won the championship that year, even after all that. And that's literally how close that our team was to winning it. But ultimately, all the Bulls failures of recent memory come down to two men, and that is Gar Foreman and John Paxson. And both those guys have combined for making terrible decisions. I've already mentioned some with like the Luol Dang one. That was, I know it was to release uh, cap space, but ultimately it was just not a good trade. We didn't get anything for it. He was having his best year of his career at that point too. Obviously the Derrick Rose trade was horrible. Like that was really bad. Uh, especially looking at how he's playing now. Like even Justin Holiday. Justin Holiday is still a role player in the NBA and we traded him with Derrick Rose. And all we got back was Calderon, who's trash. I mean, I don't wanna sugarcoat it. He's literally trash at this point in his career. Now, Calderon on the Raptors was not bad, but Calderon in like 2016 and beyond, not really much of an NBA player at that point. I mean, Robin Lopez is all right. I say he's a pretty good backup. He's not a starting center in the NBA. And then Jerry and Grant, Jerry and Grant hasn't done hardly anything in the NBA. I mean, the one trade that did kind of work in terms of talent wise was actually the Jimmy Butler trade. Zach Levine, we got Lowry Markinen, and we also got Chris Dunn. So those are three pretty big pieces. I mean, those are three or two and a half starter caliber players. Chris Dunn, I feel like is kind of in the good backup range or like a bad starter range. But ever since, they fired Thibodeau. We literally haven't been the same. I mean, it's been four years since. We've made one playoff appearance. Only played one playoff round. Now, you could argue that if Rajon Rondo doesn't get hurt in 2017, we could beat the Celtics. And, I mean, I'm kind of all for that. But, I mean, we weren't going to, like, contend for a championship or anything like that. And even if we kept Jimmy Butler and, and stuff like that, we wouldn't have been like any more than a second round team at the best. Obviously the year before that, 2016, we had injuries and just Fred Hoiberg was not really a great coach. And I never thought I'd say this, but as, as much, I mean, I miss Tom Thibodeau as the coach for the Bulls, but based off Jim Boylan coaching so bad, and not literally having a scheme for anything. I miss Fred Hoiberg. I never thought I'd say I miss Fred Hoiberg as the Bulls coach. And that's literally insane to me. Because, I mean, at least like Fred Hoiberg, he kind of like had an idea to like, you know, more perimeter like idea of, you know, space in the floor and stuff like that. Which, I mean, would be really beneficial now that we have like Otto Porter like he, he never even coached Otto Porter, Lowry Markinen, 
uh, just drafted Kobe White, who can also shoot the three. Zach Levine, he, he isn't really playing efficient, but at least he's like shooting the three pointer like a little bit better this season so far. I almost feel like we'd have a lot more wins. And I mean, so far this year, we've already lost to the Hornets after up double digits. Uh, we lost to the Knicks. We lost to the Cavaliers. And those are three games that we easily should have won. Like, we should be in the range where there are games that we can easily win. Like, we could just come back even if we're playing bad. And great teams know how to do that. And obviously, the Lakers did that last night against the Bulls because the Bulls aren't a good enough team. Like, it's just as simple as that. Jim Boylan has no idea what he's doing. And Gar Packs, both of them don't really know what they're doing in the front office. Even the Phoenix Suns, who've looked like a laughing stock for years, look like they finally turned it around, and it, all it took really was just a change in coaching and management. Like also like Zach Levine's decision making late in games, Lowry Markinen doesn't even look like he wants to play basketball at this point. Like he looks like uninterested. It's not even fun to watch. And Thomas Sadoransky, I figured him like how good he played in uh, FIBA or whatever, like championship and stuff like that. Like I figured he would be pretty good too, but he almost looks scared at times as well. And Wendell Carter, see the thing about Wendell Carter is that people said he has, a, you know, like he can, he's a jack of all trades type of player. He can do anything. And I know he's having a pretty decent start to the season, but the other thing is people compared him to Al Horford because he could shoot quite a bit. But he can't even like hardly make free throws. And that might be like the biggest thing too for the Bulls is that we can't make free throws. I mean, Zach Levine, he's struggling at the free throw line. Otto Porter, who shot over 40% from three last year when he was with the Bulls. A guy that shoots that well from that distance can't even make a free throw. Like, I don't understand that. Lowry Markkinen was struggling yesterday with his. Uh, Thaddeus Young, I'm pretty sure I heard something yesterday that said Thaddeus Young has only made one free throw on the season so far. And they've played like eight games. And the worst thing about it is that the Chicago Bulls, like everyone wants to say fire guard packs, fire guard packs. But who that runs through is Jerry Reinsdorf, who's like the official like owner of the Bulls. So if guard packs is going to get fired, it's going to have to come through him. But he's been there like for so long. And Gar Foreman and John Paxson, they've been there for a decade. So I don't think he has any interest in trying to fire them. And the other thing is, is that people will be like, oh, like it'll just be like the next owner. Cause I mean, Jerry Reinsdorf isn't gonna be owner forever. Yeah, you could say that. But the other thing is, is that Jerry Reinsdorf's son, uh, Michael Reinsdorf, I guess there's a ton of rumors saying that he could very well be the replacement for his father. And I don't know if he'd really necessarily want to change a lot of the stuff up because I know he's already affiliated with the organization in some way. So he's probably already like developed a relationship with Gar Foreman and John Paxson, which would make it really tough for him to like cut ties with both of them. That's kind of the big, big basis of why this Bulls team is becoming a laughing stock. And I know this is only like the third year in a row of missing the playoffs which, I mean, missing the playoffs in itself kind of sucks, especially for a big market like Chicago or even uh, New York as well because, like, they've missed it for many years. But a big reason why I thought we were going to make the playoffs is because of, like, the start to the season. I figured, like, oh, we start off pretty well and we get a lot of confidence. That's kind of like what the Nuggets did last year, uh, you know, after they missed the playoffs twice by, like, one game. And then they came out, you know, they won like their first four or so games, even won against the Warriors. It's like they had like all that confidence to that point, and then they never looked back. Now, I'm not saying the Bulls were going to be like a two seed or win like 53 games, at least an eight seed or like at least like kind of in the mix. Like that's what I was asking for, you know? I, like I didn't care if we were like a, a 10 or 11 seed, if we were like within like two or three games of the playoffs, like then that's a good sign. And like improvement's a good sign too. Because right now we're on pace for 21 wins. And I've kind of ruled out the two years before that because the first year Levine was hurt. And the second year Lowry Marketing was hurt for a lot of it. And I'm like, this year, okay, we got both of them together. So we're probably going to be a lot more successful. 
but ultimately that's not how it's going. Um, and I'm pretty sure that as of right now, the Chicago Bulls have had the easiest schedule in terms of just like on paper. I mean, we played the Hornets, the Grizzlies, the Knicks, the Cavs. Uh, we did play the Raptors who are probably, they're, now they are, they're definitely a playoff team. I didn't pick them as a playoff team originally. Um, but I mean, I made a huge mistake doing that. Um, they're definitely a playoff team. But they're still not the same team, obviously, without Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green. So I don't know how we can at least, like, make it at least kind of a game. Like, we just got blown out of the water, even on our home court. The Pistons, who we actually did beat, I was kind of surprised with that. But ultimately, they're not at full health either. And we almost blew a lead because uh, if they would have Blake Griffin as well and Reggie Jackson, then they most likely would have won that game. The Indiana Pacers which is another bad loss. No Victor Oladipo still, no Miles Turner, no Demonis Sabonis, three of their five best players. We still lose by 13. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. And we're all fully healthy too. So it's just not really, it doesn't really add up. I think a lot of it comes down to coaching and it comes down to management. I don't know, but hopefully the Bulls can end up turning it around. And I know tonight they play the Hawks. They'll most likely lose that. And then they play the Rockets. They'll most likely lose that. And then they play the Knicks in Chicago. So they could have a chance to win that game. Um, but I'm not going to count on it. And then they play the Bucks, And, I mean, the Bucks could probably rest like their starters. And the Bulls would probably still lose. So it's just really hard right now. For the whole Bulls fan base, including myself, I don't really know where they go from here because obviously the owner of the Bulls is probably not going to be changing too much of scenery for a while. It's going to stay in the Reimsdorf family. Uh, Gar Foreman and John Paxson have been around way too long to get fired. So it's almost going to have to wait out until like they actually retire, which is kind of dumb and they're gonna keep hiring bad coaches along the way. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think that the Chicago Bulls should be doing. Um, it's just really hard to try and decipher. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and I'm out, peace.